A chiller, also known as refrigeration unit, is a thermal machine which, by exploiting the compression and expansion of a refrigerating gaseous fluid, can remove the heat from a heat-carrying fluid, which is often water or air. JAWS, leader in the spare parts industry for more than 10 years, offers in its catalog all types of chillers from leading manufacturers. A chiller is a large piece of equipment enclosing several thermal machines, one after the other, used to create with a stream of refrigerant fluid, cycles called refrigeration cycles. The enclosed machines are the following, the compressor, the condenser, the expansion valve, and the evaporator. This refrigerant fluid is used to cool the heat transfer fluid, usually water, which is used in industrial applications to reach and to maintain low temperatures in several processes, or even to regulate the internal temperature of large buildings. Step by step, let's see how it works in this example of a building air conditioning system. Inside the chiller, the refrigerant fluid, which can be composed of ammonia or freon and other halogenal alkanes, also called chlorofluorocarbons, has certain physical characteristics that helps it perform the refrigeration cycle. The compressor turns the refrigerant fluid into a gaseous state which increases not only its pressure, but also its temperature. To make this happen, the refrigerant gas passes through the condenser, a coil that makes the refrigerant to condense into a liquid state and lower its temperature. To dissipate the heat of the refrigerant fluid, the condenser needs air or water. Usually, air-cooled condensers are equipped with cooling fins on the coil. The fans that force the passage of the air, which are all part of the chiller. For this reason, the whole chiller must be installed on the outside to expel the heat into the atmosphere. Liquid-cooled condensers, on the other hand, are essentially heat exchangers that use a water circuit to extract the heat from the refrigerant fluid. The water used to take out the heat then needs a remote component to cool at its rate which is usually a forced circulation cooling tower with fans that suck in the air. The liquid refrigerant fluid now flows to the expansion valve, which decreases its pressure. This simple action involves significant changes in the coolant. As a matter of fact, by reducing the pressure, it lowers the temperature and therefore its boiling point. In this way, the refrigerant can evaporate at lower temperatures. This is possible thanks to a thermodynamics phenomenon called the Joule-Thomson effect. These new characteristics enable the coolant to absorb the heat in the refrigerator, achieving the required temperature by passing through the evaporator. The evaporator also functions as a heat exchanger, using the refrigerant fluid to lower the temperature of the water circuit called the heat transfer fluid. Although maintaining its temperature, the refrigerant fluid absorbs the heat and consequently evaporates. It then returns to the compressor to close the refrigeration cycle and repeat it continuously. The heat transfer fluid circuit now uses a hydraulic pump to pump fresh water inside the building to the indoor units. In the indoor units, the water circulates through a series of coils where the hot air of the building that passes through them is lowered in temperature and is then reintroduced into the room. The heat transfer fluid instead returns back to the chiller, which dissipates the accumulated heat. If it is necessary to heat a building, some chillers can operate in heating mode. This is called heat pump technology. As for industrial processes, the heat transfer fluid, in this case, is used to cool products or machinery by means of a remote heat exchanger. The heat transfer fluid, therefore, never comes in contact with the product, 
or the cooling fluid of the machinery. However, as you can see, the two items always remain separate thanks to the heat exchanger, thus avoiding any contamination. The heat transfer fluid is then used also for cooling laser machines, to control the temperature of moving parts, machine tools, computers, and for chemical and food processes. If you found this video useful, please let us know by leaving a comment. You can also share it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We recommend that you visit our website, jawscompany.com, to find out about our upcoming projects.